one rubber match here this afternoon. A busy day on campus here in Waco. But both these teams excited to collide one more time. Always great when you get to test yourself against a high caliber opponent like these two programs are getting to do for a third straight game. Of yes. course, both of them postseason bound a year ago. We definitely love to see it. We love to see it this early in the game. Both teams travel from here. They uh, head to the Mary Nutter Classic um, next weekend where they're going to see even more top ranked teams. And Orm will get the nod again for the second time in three games against the Ducks, hoping to repeat the feat from yesterday. Transfer in from her home state. As Orm coming from Fresno State, the former Bulldog. And meanwhile, of course, for the Ducks, this is their fourth game in three days. They actually started a couple days ago with a single contest in San Marcos down south against Texas State. There you see the lineup for Melissa Lombardi now in year four at the helm of the Ducks. You see Paige Sinicki there in that two-hole spot. Just we, sh we saw what she's capable of doing last night. Um, likewise, we're going to see in Baylor's number two spot, Mackenzie Wilson, who's also making just a statement, statement piece this season. And you take a look at the defense for Glenn Moore's women with West, Wilson, and Watson, the back of the phone book in the outfield with Bouvier and Hot up the middle. Binford, again, very capable in the circle in her own right this year. Her new home at the Hawk Corner this season after often finding herself in shortstop, Kendall Cross, along with Coyazos, round out the diamond. We saw two completely different defenses from Baylor last night. Uh, when Aliyah's at third base, she was just, it's just, she's just a solid defensive player. Um, she's capable of making great plays and making them look very easy. This is a strong defense they fielded right here. Elgana leads things off, sees a first pitch strike from Orm. No shortage of Californians making their way up to the Pacific Northwest. Been their time in Eugene. Subsequent offering in there as well. Our home plate umpire, Bubba Ewald, Terry Holt, and Peter Blair rounding out our three person crew. Actually, a scratch. Jared Arrington will be our third base umpire. Right side, hot. No sweat over to Cross in plenty of time as Delgado retired for the first down. And that is just what Daria Orm is capable of doing. She's going to, she throws hard. She can tap out in the mid 70s, um, but she's going to throw high 60s consistently and move that ball around, especially that drop ball, kind of her go to pitch. So Nikki broke that game open last night. And even though Baylor fought until the final out, Oregon had put up enough runs to ensure the split of yesterday's doubleheader. The Ducks have not been uh, shy in finding quick success these past several seasons under Melissa Lombardi in non-conference play despite tremendous non-conference scheduling. This year, the Ducks have 23 games against teams that were in the NCAA tournament last year. And, of course, their first 19 games this year away from Eugene. We talked about last night just how difficult that must be for them to be on the road that much and how exciting it is to play in front of your home stand. But on the flip side of that, with 14 Californians and them playing quite a few tournaments in California, maybe it is not at your home stadium, but definitely in front of your own family and friends. On the bright side, they're probably not going to have to buy any shampoo for the rest of the uh, semester. You're going to have to explain your thought process on that one. <laughs> you don't let it go to waste. You hit all these hotels. As the one-out walk, and Sinicki is on with one away, making way to the three-hole alley bunker. Bunker last year, first team all-conference as well as all-defensive team. 
in the Pac-12. Led the team with her 49 runs batted in last season, 10 home runs for the then junior. And they'll throw behind the runner just to keep Sanicki honest after she walked a moment ago. Last year, Bunker was one of just six players in the entire country to have double-digit home runs and only strike out six times or fewer. It's definitely a hard strikeout. We saw that yesterday also. So it is far, for all, far from all or nothing with her swing. And as I say that, trying to perhaps help out her runner, but it'll be a stolen base for Sanicki. A little hit and run action there. Get a big swing for it. Not even close to the pitch, just to take away the t some time for Sydney Claus to get that throw down there. I don't know if you could get a better jump than Sinicki did there. Bunker hitting 355 on the young campaign. And this will get out of play, Phil. Allie won a f four different ducks with home runs on the year. Just so you don't think I'm making it up, <laughs> her numbers from a year ago. More home runs and strikeouts. That's pretty impressive. Ducks have a runner in scoring position after the stolen base from Sinicki. Here's the one two from Orm. And regardless of where that hitter, Bunker was swinging, but it's a foul ball. We'll let her, I would say, walk it off. Not sure what the equivalent is. Shake it off? If it's, yeah, sh shake it off. A little Taylor Swift. <laughs> kind of hard to tell from that, that angle. Fifty nine degrees out. And these women woke up this morning. It was a little bit above freezing. <laughs> but as the sun has climbed, so has the temperature. I think we'll peak in the low sixties during this one. Sunshine feel, feels good. The two two to Allie Bunker with a runner on and one out. Right back up the middle, past the diving glove of Hot. And Sinicki's going to be able to come home and score. They'll throw down the second, not in time. So an RBI base hit with one away for Ali Bunker. And the Ducks strike first here in Waco. Emily Hot gave her her best effort, laid out for that ball, just couldn't get it. Mackenzie Wilson comes up throwing, still not, just not in time. Another look at the RBI single and advancing on the throw. Just past her. You definitely don't want the run to score, but I oh mean, you definitely don't want her at second base either. So you're right back where you were a moment ago with a run on second, but now trailing by a run. Orm again, that shutout in game one yesterday. This is KK Humphreys in the cleanup spot for the first time today. Humphreys, one of six ducks in today's lineup, hitting 300 or better here early in the season. A couple of extra base hits, both doubles and seven RBI. We'll see if she can find some insurance here. Bunker, the runner, on second after driving home Sinicki a moment ago. KK transferring over from Cal State Fullerton where she was first team all Big West. She's your first baseman for the Ducks. She was middle infield, second base and shortstop her time back in her home state. Nine home runs with Fullerton a year ago. She's got one on the season so far this year. 
Again, Bunker, your runner on second, still one out. A walk followed by an RBI base hit. Early batter retired Hannah Delgado with that ground out to the right side to get this ball game underway. Ducks facing Dari Orm for a second straight day. Into foul territory and just won't be able to track that one down. Ducks are doing a great job here, just getting a bat on the pitch of Orm. Last night we saw her move that ball around quite a bit. A lot of swing and misses today. They're fouling off that pitch, trying to get a better pitch. That's up a full count here to KK. And the Ducks tack one on. Payoff pitch pays off for Orm. Her first strikeout on the day as she sits down, the cleanup hitter for Oregon. That is what you see from Dari. Moves the ball, she throws hard, catches the corner just enough to sit her down. Denise Collazo's helping frame that one. This way to Jasmine Williams out of the five spot. Baylor not out of the woods just yet. But a first pitch strike for the duck right fielder. Just because there are two outs, you cannot count these ducks out. Scoring more than half of their runs this season with two outs. Now caught in a pickle. Ball squeezes out of the glove of Hot. As Bunker back in time. Almost got it. We're not going to go to a video review, are we? <laughs> not yet. We saw a few of those yesterday. Baylor was 3-0 and in those reviews in Orm's first game yesterday. In the first game? Yep. One did not turn over for Baylor in the second game. <laughs> Baylor one strike away here in the first inning from getting their bats up to the plate for the first time and down just by one run. Runner on second bunker with the RBI. Orm delivers to Williams, who will fight to keep this top half of the first alive. These Oregon Ducks, like we talked about, are just definitely making an adjustment from the at-bats yesterday. Orm kind of fooled them early later on, early in the game, and end up throwing a shutout. Uh, they are fouling off pitches and looking much better in the box this game early on. Again, the one two. Right side, hot. They help secure it over to cross in time. But the duck strike first in the top of the first. Allie Bunker brings home Paige Sinicki, and it's Oregon up one nothing heading into the home half of the first inning in Waco. This is Mountain Dew. A rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Dew to do. Style. Performance. Power. Pancake, turtleneck sweater, aardvark, Worcestershire, or Shire, I guess. It doesn't matter what I say, the Camry speaks for itself. Toyota, let's go places. This one's for everyone whose man cave is more of a man corner of a guest room closet. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. Let there be light. Let there be roommates and teammates and strangers who become family. Let there be marching and cheering. Let there be challenging courses and time to share. Scholarship and championships. 
Let there be groundbreaking and soul searching. Let there be laughter. Let there be joy. Let there be light. Back on Big 12 now here on ESPN Plus. Rubber match between the 13th ranked Ducks and the Baylor Bears. Their third game in a span of about 24 hours. And a chance to see Stevie Hansen pitch with a lead when she steps into the circle for the first time here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, she's matching uh, Dari Orm, 17 strikeouts on the season. She was super effective last night in game two. Um, Moves the ball around quite a bit. Just a hard-throwing young arm for these Oregon Ducks. First pitch from the freshman to Emily Hunt. Off the mark for ball one. Let's take a look at Glenn Moore's lineup. Of course, coach in his 22nd year in Waco. As Wilson on deck, Coyazos in the hole. Top third of this order. Glenn Moore. Every day is leg day and upper body day. You get the feeling. He was excited because these athletes, for the first time in a couple of years, actually got a full strength and conditioning off season. Yes. That was something the pandemic took away from them. Talking to baseball coaches as well, you'll hear the similar talking points about just loving to finally get these athletes into a gym and really start to develop here at the collegiate level. You hear high school football coach is talking about the same thing too. I'm sure that's on Glenn's resume if you dig deep enough. Somewhere in there. Baylor down a run and hot not doing any favors for the freshman Hansen in the circle. Hot hitting 391 coming into this contest. One of a couple of Baylor Bears to find a home run here early in the season. And she'll share a little bit of knowledge with her teammates on her way back to the dugout. So first strikeout for Stevie Hansen. Again, spotted a 1-0 advantage here in the bottom of the first. Brings up Mackenzie Wilson, uh, one of the transfers from Fresno State. As the pride of Long Beach knocking off some rust before the start of this year. Had had a couple of years away from competitive softball. Now that she's healthy and good to go. Fastest player on this team if she can get on and set the table here with one away. Corners cheat in. It's, let's see if they'll be able to get her at first. They will not. Even if Bunker fields that one cleanly, I don't know that Humphreys is able to get back to first in time to beat Wilson. Yeah, Wilson definitely has speed. If she hit that ball hard, you can see it kind of just takes one more hop right up. And you can tell they're deliberating. Can't handle it. Whether this is a field single or an error. Might have got her in the chin. It's hard to tell if she, did she try to square up for that ball and then sees that it's taken a, a bad hop? Ooh, tough. Or does she try to backhand that? And that's one of the reasons why she's not squared up in front of it. Yeah, tough score for Bunker. They do say an E4. Again, I'm not sure even if she snags that ball, if anybody's gonna be covering first base because the corners had to respect the speed of Wilson and her ability to slap. So one on, one out for Coyazos. Runner going, have to retreat after the foul ball. Sydney from just down the road in Georgetown, Texas. Former Georgetown High Eagle. Limited playing time last year despite a really good fall. But overall, Ben Moore will tell you she's got one of the best swings on the entire team. the fingertips of Seneki and there are two Baylor Bears aboard. And that's where you see that great swing right there. She waited on that pitch. She got all of it just over the jumping shortstop. We'll save you some time. That's going to be ruled a hit. 
Absolutely. She earned that one, got on top of that ball. A lot of times you see that rise ball go up and you're gonna see um, girls pop up that, you know, hit a pop up sky at high, but she got on top of that and hit a nice line drive. So that gives way to Aaliyah Benford who, if she only played shortstop in her first couple years, would have been a great asset to the team, or if she'd only pitched, but could do both this year. She slides to third base where she gets the start today. This is punched out towards right, as Williams with the catch and tagging up the throw off the mark, but a great job backing up the throw. The pitcher Stevie Hansen to keep it a one-run advantage for now with two outs. If you are a young softball player watching right there, that is textbook by Stevie Hansen. When you're pitching and you give up a hit like that, it's it's hard to remember to go and get in your spot where you need to, but she is exactly where she needed to be, kept that ball from getting into the dugout. Again, the base hit from Collazos that put two on for Baylor. Lone hit so far this inning, and then a moment ago, Aaliyah Benford flying out towards right. I was gonna say that was the different hit. <laughs> that was the single by Benford or the single by Collazos. So two on, two out. The team meeting with Anna Watson coming up has a chance to tie it with any kind of base hit. The runner on third. Mindful your pitcher and catcher need to be on the same page here. Here's Benford's bat out to right. Jasmine Williams had plenty of arm to spare on that. Heads up base running there too. To get over there, know that that ball's hit in the air behind you. And even though it's pretty shallow, hey, that's a far throw for a right fielder to make. On a Watson, you can sum her up, a spray hitter with power. See if she can find a gap. There's a big one in left center. As they are favoring that left field line, they've done some scouting on her early on. Hanson struck out the leadoff hitter since then. An infield error, a single, and ball out to right. So two outs, two on. Tying run 60 feet away. We've got a nice crowd here. We do. Both Duck fans and Bear fans alike. Of course, there's horned frogs and bears across the parking lot on the hardwood floor. We've got Mustangs and Bears playing tennis right behind us. Got some uh, Maryland's playing baseball behind next to us. That's right. Lots of action if you're here in Waco. Come catch a game. You and I probably have the best spot to advise people to find the open parking uh, <laughs> opportunities out there in left field. From this spot, yes. Trying to park personally myself earlier, no. The one, two, and the count will stay at one and two. Again, Wilson, the runner on third, Collazos on second. Here in the bottom half of the first inning, the freshman in the circle, Stevie Hansen, getting the starting nod, and that's our view. A lot of that basketball and softball lovers. Pretty decent tailgating was going on earlier. I'm told uh, Scott Drew's Bears lead 42-29. Not sure what inning that is. <laughs> Of course, the women are in Fort Worth. Both the men and women are playing TCU for the second time this week. The 2-2, unable to hold up, and Baylor will leave the tying run 60 feet away. Stevie Hansen pitches her way out of a jam. The Ducks, after one, still lead by one. You're watching Big 12 now on this Saturday afternoon in Central Texas.
First inning complete, each team finds a base hit. Baylor strands a pair, so Oregon looking for insurance here in the top half of the second inning. Six, seven, and eight hitters due up, beginning with Rachel Sid. Definitely want to keep attacking, keep making adjustments, pitch to pitch, at bat to at bat. See what you can do here. Sid came into this season having started all 133 games of her college career, including all 57 last season. The 0-1 from Orm. Not a lot of ducks in an 0-2 hole so far today. No. That's really, we've seen Dart Orm when she pitches from that count. She is so efficient. The numbers for Sid. And just unable to paint the outside frame. Well, that's probably exactly where she wanted to put it. She doesn't want to put it. She doesn't necessarily looking for a called third strike right there where she wants to maybe a swing. See if Rachel will, see if Sid will do her some favors. Sit at the plate, Valerie Wong, the catcher on deck. The one two. Able to hold up. They'll peel down, but did not go. It was Ali Bunker last inning who brought home Paige Sinicki. Sinicki had walked with one out in the inning. Oregon able to strike first for a second straight game here in Waco. Low one over to Hunt, no problem. Second straight inning, Orm is able to keep the leadoff hitter off the base pass. We can call that efficient. That's what you want to do. That leadoff runner, especially in softball, with no outs is incredibly difficult to overcome. You're saying E1. <laughs> Valerie Wong, as noted yesterday, played six different positions last year for the Ducks. She's your catcher here today. All three outfield positions, first base, second base, as well on her resume. That's in the seventh spot in the lineup. The Duck team that had 50 different lineups during the 57 games played a year ago. We saw two very different lineups last night also. For those of you who fill out your own scorecard, you're just patiently waiting, <laughs> not taking anything for granted as to whom will be in what spot of the lineup. The one one from Orm. And Wong ahead in the count. Mentioned the great starts the Ducks have had the past few years, including a couple years before the pandemic shut down the 2020 season. They were 22 and 2. Wow. Of course, 
last year with the return of the NCAA tournament. The committee uh, thought it was appropriate to send them to Austin. Don't know if the Longhorns nor the Ducks were thrilled with that. While the Bears were sent packing out to Gainesville. This year the Ducks are preseason pick tied for third in the Pac-12. Their season did end in Austin last year. As that one will bite Wong in the batter's box, just a foul ball. Of course, Mike White preceded Melissa Lombardi and Eugene who are moving to Austin. There's history for sure. It's complicated, I guess you would say. Kids would say these days. That's what the status update says. The 2-2 to Wong. Right back up the middle, past the diamond glove of Bouvier, and it's a one-out base hit for Valerie Wong. It's kind of the in-between, if we take a look at that again. She kind of takes one extra step towards the middle, almost like she can get there without the dive, and then tries to dive and just drive, dives right over it. That gives way to the eight spot, Han Hannah Gailey. One of the two Hannahs in the outfield for Oregon this year. Gailey, the senior from Oregon, had a fantastic diving catch and left last night. See what she can do with her bat here with a no-one count with a runner on. That runner, Wong, back in time with one away. If only uh, John Morris was here for his Oregon <laughs> geography. Go ahead. How do you say it, Lincoln? Bless you. <laughs> Rachel Sid grounded out to lead off this inning. Valerie Wong with a single, still standing on first. As Gailey trying to improve upon those numbers. With a nice opportunity here. Got her on the inside offering, and Collazos had plenty of time and plenty of arm to wipe Wong off the base paths, her counterpart. A little hit and run gone wrong. A good swing, but just not a, needed to put it in play. And that is some good uh, film for Collazos to put on the scouting report for all future opponents and maybe keep their runners a little more honest. We did see Sinicki steal successfully last inning, arguably helping Sinicki ultimately score last inning. So the Ducks are one for two today on the base paths. Now two outs, nobody on for Gailey. Got her on the 2-2. Two -two. So in the end, Dari Orm faces the minimum despite a base hit, factoring in in the second. After one and a half, still a lone run separating the Ducks and Bears. Baylor's bats are back after this. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. Helping those who help others. That's the mission of Charity Champions, a program designed to support nonprofits in Central Texas. Charity Champions started in 2014 to celebrate TFNB Your Bank for Life's 125th anniversary. Champions get a marketing awareness campaign, leadership training, and a team of interns at no charge to the organization. Seven years, 43 champions, and we are just getting started. Learn more at charitychampions.org. Yeah. <laughs> 
burgers. Better with Pepsi. of the second inning coming up here at Ketterman Stadium. Take a look at the Big 12 preseason poll. Bears slotted to finish fourth behind a pretty impressive field, including both of the teams north of the Red River with high expectations. Oklahoma, of course, uh, previous stomping grounds of one Melissa Lombardi. She's got a little bit of hardware from her time as an assistant there. Just a little. Assistant, associate, head coach. I believe she played there also. Yep, class of 97 for the Sooners. Bauer at the plate with a 1-1 count to the DP's name. Six, seven, and eight hitters. The minimum due up to face the freshman in the circle, Stevie Hansen. Baylor stranded two last inning, including the tying run 60 feet away. And Bauer now ahead in the count. Go see one of these juniors who already has three years of experience, making the most of her college career. And after a first pitch strike from Hanson, the last three have been off the mark. Let's see if Bauer keeps that bat on her back shoulder and tries to become the first leadoff hitter to reach for either team today. Hanson, a pair of strikeouts last inning. And unable to find the strike zone the last four pitches. Bauer has a leadoff walk. First free pass for Baylor. Bauer last year three for three in the stolen base department. Here's Kendall Cross, your first baseman these days for Baylor. You saw her in just seven outings a year ago. He was 0 for 3 last year, did have a couple of walks. Power this year hitting 200 early on. As Valerie Wong wants to talk to her freshman pitcher. Ducks finished last year ranked 12th. Meanwhile, Baylor, boy, the injuries piled up, didn't they, at the end of the year? Baylor wound up losing their final eight games, their last six in conference, but Glenmore's women had put so much together on their resume and non-conference scheduling and early in Big 12 that they earned the right to play in the NCAA tournament as one of the top two seeds in Gainesville. Ultimately, though, would fall both against South Alabama and USM. Yeah, you mentioned those injuries, and I mean, it, it hit Baylor hard, too. Especially you think of the powerful bat with Anna Watson that comes out, and you lose her for all of conference play, and it's hard to overcome from that. Uh, Cross unable to get the bunt down. No harm done, however. Back to the backstop. Bauer stays at first. But Glenn Moore was excited about big picture with this team. High ceiling this year, and almost the entire team should be back next year as well. It's a young group. We talked a lot of a few transfers, but a lot of young kids making an impact early on. 
And 1-2 outside. Count evens up to cross. Riley Bouvier is on deck in the eight hole. Casey West in the nine spot today. Right now, Josie Bauer, the runner on first after the leadoff walk. We'll see if Baylor can bring her around to tie up this ball game before the second inning concludes. And cross down on strikes. Third strikeout for Hansen through one and a third. You just kind of see the movement here that Hansen can bring. That screwball, especially, she keeps it outside to these left-handed batters with such great movement. It's hard to hit, hard to put a bat on it. That brings up the lefty, Bouvier. It's from the greater Houston area, went to Santa Fe High School. They've had some really good teams at the state level over the years. Bouvier is probably going to be splitting time this year and shortstop with Selman. First thing her head coach thought of talking about her was uh, Bill Mickelson. Comparing swings lefty to lefty. Yeah, I'm not sure there was much more to compare. <laughs> Both of them probably dreaded handwriting class growing up. I would venture to say Riley Bouvier probably doesn't even write left-handed, as most of these left-handed batters do or don't. Does she text less left-handed? <laughs> Bouvier with one on, one out. Bauer with the leadoff walk, unable to advance a moment ago with the strikeout of Cross. Hansen still facing the Baylor lineup for the first time. As Bouvier, one for six on the young campaign. This will hang up there. It's going to stay in the infield for Sinecki and falls off her teammates, two away. That was Gailey saying, next time, let me have a diving catch and get on Sports Center. <laughs> no, but it is Casey West here thinking, give me the bat. I want a net bat. It's one of the few we did not see yesterday. West, first pitch she sees. And there's Sinicki again retiring the last two hitters. So after a leadoff walk for Josie Bauer, she never advances another step. The next three batters retired in order. Hansen has faced all nine Bears. Two shots. Back on Big 12 now. This week is, among other things, Big 12 Mental Health Awareness Week, and Baylor already ahead of the game. Yeah, de definitely blessed. And for the last 20 years, Dr. Corley there, you can kind of fairly see him in the back of the dugout, uh, volunteers his time with the team, working on just the mental part of the sport, but just also the, somebody to talk to and a counselor, a local psychologist that just gives his time to the, these Bears and offer his services. 
it's one great thing Coach Moore really does is he focuses on all aspect of the athlete. Uh, he's got the faith aspect on his team. He has a great community. He brings in the mental health piece. Um, they do the physical, you mentioned it earlier, just the physical piece of making sure he get a good, strong workout. Um, just all sides of the student. Ducks have a pair of Luchar sisters. This is Kedri Luchar, the family from Carson City, Nevada. Luchar, the DP today, batting out of the ninth spot, behind in the count, 0-2 to Orm. Orm has struck out a pair today, including the final out last inning, in which the Ducks got a base hit, but that base runner eliminated from the base pass on a botched hit and run. The Shark in reach with Hannah Delgado in the top of the order right behind her. Definitely love to see the speed in the nine hole, almost a, a pre leadoff hitter for your leadoff hitter. Corners are playing up. Benford at third, Cross at first. Ready for a slap. The 0-2 from Orm. Again, a doubleheader yesterday. Baylor with the shutout victory with Orm in the circle in the first game. Ducks came roaring back in game two. So winner of this will take the series and a little momentum going into next week. A lot more softball to be played before these two teams step into conference play. That's a big competition on both sides uh, next week coming up. Oregon looks like they're set to face Northwestern. He just knocked off UCLA last night. And then Missouri and Seattle, Cal State Fullerton. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Orm. Now bridging the last two innings of work. As a shard down on strikes. That brings up Delgado with one out, nobody on. We saw Delgado ground out to Emily Hot to begin the ball game. And Delgado, third team all Pac-12 last year. Sophomore in the leadoff spot for the Ducks. And time called. And a couple things happened there. I believe time was called by the hitter Delgado, but then a moment later, either Orm had a wasp fly by her or maybe didn't see that time had been called and was caught in an uncomfortable spot. Gotta watch out for those wasps. I mean, I had one try to enter the press box, but we're pretty stingy around here with the credentialing process. <laughs> I count even at one and one. Another look. Definitely getting this in. <laughs> I would venture to say mosquitoes, but I think it's still a little cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, I'm glad we had the replay. I don't know that it provided <laughs> any clarification uh, other than uh, we can speculate further. We can save that for the post-game interview. One ball, two strikes to Delgado with one away. Ducks trying to build on a one-run lead. When you saw a pitcher for a second game, uh, did that benefit you? Absolutely. You know, this is a whole game of adjustments, and so you, you're lucky if you can make adjustments pitch to pitch and at bat to at bat, but when you get to see a pitcher second game, third game through, um, you kind of learn their pitching patterns, you kind of learn what are they going to throw, you kind of 
have seen it and so you know what to expect when they throw that certain pitch. Um, you're really high caliber pitchers. It doesn't matter how many times you face them, they're still gonna be effective. Whether they start to break that ball a little earlier than they normally would or mix up their patterns and keep you on their toes. One out, nobody on. And it's a full count to Delgado. And we often hear about really the third time through a lineup, that lineup gets a little more comfortable if possible with the pitcher, but getting to digest it overnight and see that pitcher again the next day. Never know. You never know, but then you have, you have like you said, your high caliber pitchers. I think, I don't know how many times I faced Kat Osterman, and no matter how many times you step in the box against her, I mean, she has the advantage. She's so good at what she does. We're not gonna hold that against you. <laughs> I'm just one of the masses there. Of course, Kat stepped away from her assistant coaching gig at Texas State to uh, wear the red, white, and blue one more time. Looked a little different wearing the 38. <laughs> and that one off of Haunt. And there have been a couple of tough ones over there on the right side. Delgado is on after battling. And she's just the second batter to come up this inning. Third straight inning, the Ducks have a base runner. Need to bring the grounds crew over there to that side. And let me correct something. You know, we had an error in this ball game, and they've they've changed that to a hit. That's a tough play. It's that in-between bounce. And they're going to rule that one a hit. I guess now I'll say for now. It was Mackenzie Wilson for Baylor who presumably is benefiting from a scoring change back in the first inning when it looked to be an E4. And I'm just looking up there on that big scoreboard out there in center field and there's no longer any errors. Here's Paige Sinecki. That one doesn't go quite as far as the one last night. And a fielder's choice will wipe Delgado off the base pass for out number two. Stop by a pitcher. Wasp or no wasp. So here's Bunker, the hero in the first inning with a one out RBI single at the time, trying to come through here with two outs. The difference is base runner not in scoring position. And Collazos thought she might have a chance to show off her arm again. Bunker a big one for one today with the RBI. That's the difference in the ball game at the moment. Gets underneath this one. See if it stays playable in foul territory. It will not. It's out over the screen. And Bunker hitting in the three spot out of Huntington Beach. Obviously has some pop in her swing. We mentioned 10 home runs last year, leading the team in RBI. The 0-2 with two outs, runner is going, Collazos. Boy, I thought that one was on a line to Mackenzie Wilson in center field, but it did die down. Uh, a stolen base for Sinecki, her second on the day. Almost looked like she put some pretty wicked spin on that ball. Not a bad idea. With two outs, stealing, see if you can get a base closer. Tanicki came home last time that Bunker put one in play. And that throw off the mark, and she will score. Boy, it looked like the Bears were going to get out of the inning without any damage done, but instead an automatic extra base awarded to Bunker after that ball thrown away. As an error for the Bears, Cost them a run here in the third. A run and an extra base here. I mean, Riley does a great job of fielding that ball cleanly. Looks like she has plenty of time to make the throw. Throws it high and sails into the dugout. And 
And let's see if they are going to run for Bunker. I only ask that because Melissa Lombardi's out. First talking to our home plate umpire, now chatting with KK Humphreys. <laughs> umpire of the Ewald with a lengthy written entry. <laughs> Trying to listen to yeah. see when I was explaining the day out here. No changes that we can detect. So Allie Bunker, the runner on second, third inning is still underway. That brings the bat of KK Humphreys to the plate, struck out looking back in the first. That was the second out at the time. You hear the pop of the glove of Collazos as Orm back out in front with an 0-1 count. First year with the Ducks for Humphreys. Coming over from Cal State Fullerton. Behind the count, 0-2. Fifth batter this inning. Run has already come home for insurance. And Humphrey is doing a little favor there for Orm. But it had to protect the plate. You don't see a, that up pitch from Orm very often. He tries to throw that there with two strikes. It's fouled off. You see she knows two strikes. I've got to get my timing, get that bat out there, try and be a a little bit more effective. 0-2, oh, this one launched down towards right center, off the base of the wall, and the Ducks continue to take advantage of another unearned run. Bunker comes home, scoring from second. It's a two-out RBI double for KK Humphreys. Said at another two-out run here for these Oregon Ducks. She's just got all that pitch. And with her bat out front there, she's definitely not trying to bunt. She's using that for timing to see the pitch better, and she definitely definitely worked for her. The best contact we've seen here early on. Anna Watson did a great job of tracking that ball. It's almost like, I feel like if she would have put her glove up, she might have had a chance to catch it. I'm not sure where that sun is, how, he's, how easy that is to track right now. Again, a couple of batters ago, Baylor thought they were out of the inning. Still just trailing by one, but an infield error. A couple of batters later, here's Jasmine Williams, 0 for 1 today. And Collazos again, keeping the base runner Humphreys honest over there at second. Rachel Sid is on deck if Williams can extend this two-out rally. A single, a fielder's choice, an infield error, and then the RBI double. First extra base hit of the day belongs to KK Humphreys. The 2-1 from Dari Orm. That wind blowing out towards right. Direction in which Humphreys 
Sent the ball just a moment ago. The 3-1. Left side to Benford. And most shortstops turn third baseman. Not going to have a problem with that one. Plenty of arm for Aaliyah. But the Ducks add two more. It's a 3-0 advantage for the Pac-12 power as we head into the home half of the third. Home half of the third coming up here in Waco at Gutterman Stadium. And a couple of impressive coaching resumes for Baylor. 22 years at the helm now for Glenn Moore, the former offensive lineman with Ed Orgeron at Northwestern State over in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Had a chance to have a little homecoming uh, to kick off the season. Take a look at some of his numbers, including guiding Baylor back to the NCAA tournament last year. He surrounded himself with a great staff, and of course, you look into the Ducks dugout, and she surrounded herself with a brand new coaching staff this year, including Sam Martyr and former Duck Nikki Reagan. All of her assistants in their first year in Eugene. Mentioned uh, she was a little partial to the Crimson and Cream for a while there before heading out to the Northwest. I know the two of them have kind of been paired up as one of the uh, Sam Martyr and Melissa Lombardi just kind of paired up as one of the best hires in the nation right there. Tag team approach. I think Baylor fans would agree with the same thing that you got here with Coach Moore and Coach Brittany Smee Newman and even Hoot John again with the addition of him two years ago. Yeah, of course, uh, the former Brittany Sneed is, uh, I believe, about to be inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. That's in Natchitoches, Louisiana, so she'll be headed back over there. And then, uh, of course, uh, Hoot John again. They're thrilled to have him. Don't necessarily love the circumstances that created the opening with the passing of Mark Lumley, but uh, this program has been blessed with uh, well, some, some pretty good candidates over the years. Again, losing. Coach Lum back in December of 2020. Who John again seen time uh, doing, wearing a variety of hats here on campus at Baylor. The baseball program, softball program. I think he's, of course, uh, familiar with wearing a headset as well. I feel like next inning we should just ask him to ask all the questions. There you go. I'm okay with that. Of Glenn Moore. This one down the line, but foul. This is again for Baylor. Second time through the order. Emily Hot's been busy at second base for Baylor through these first few innings. Sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma. And in softball, we see a variety of approaches in that leadoff spot. Obviously, there's the traditional slapper. But if you can find a, a leadoff hitter who's got some punch, and that's more of the mentality here of Emily Hunt. 
We've seen some teams go pretty deep into the tournament in Oklahoma City with that approach. You know, you don't see it as often, but it definitely makes sense. If you have a power hitter and they have to face them, you don't want to start off with a leadoff walk. Uh, you pitch to them, and if they're consistent and they're efficient and they can hit the ball a long way, I mean, you're already down 1-0, and you're just one at bad end of the game. So uh, it's an interesting approach. It's a way to think outside of the box, and it's been effective for some, some teams, including some Baylor teams. And by the end of a season, you just wonder how many additional plate appearances they wind up getting because of their positioning at the top of the order. Yeah. Well, Hunt struck out back in the first. The leadoff walk here is the second straight inning. Hanson has walked the leadoff hitter, and usually that's a huge no-no, but Baylor did not make her pay last inning after Bauer walked in the second, never advanced to second. Yeah, we said that last night. 85% of the time, leadoff walks end up scoring. So you don't you don't want to ever want to walk a batter, but you certainly don't want to do that with a leadoff hitter. These some of the talking points for the first two and a half innings. Only two walks for Hanson today. Both leadoff walks in the last two innings. First pitch to Wilson is high, not tempting for McKenzie. Baylor definitely has the opportunity to capitalize on that here. McKenzie would be another possible candidate really for that leadoff spot for Baylor. I think she would be your normal, what you would typically see. She's got a lot of speed. She's very high batting average, high slugging percentage where she gets herself on base. Um, but she does that from the, the two spot here. And the pride of Long Beach, California, trying to put a butt, bunt down there and move Hunt into scoring position, if not also reach as well. That one out of play into the bullpen. Not sure if there are any available hotel rooms in Waco this weekend with all the sports going on. There are definitely hotels coming up everywhere, though. Every part of town, there's a new hotel being built. You would think there's one being built in the middle of I-35. <laughs> Mackenzie Wilson hit by pitch. So Mackenzie's reached today on an error, and now uh, picking up a little bruise. Badge. Badge of honor. That's definitely not what you want to see. You, you have a speed of hot and a very quick speed of Mackenzie Wilson on base now. Well, Stevie Hansen with a three-run lead is going to exit this ball game for the Ducks. They'll go to McKinnickley Thermos. We'll have more on the former Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year when you rejoin us here on Big 12 Now. Well, for already the sixth time on this young campaign, McKinnickley Thermos steps into the circle, product of Wardsville, Missouri. Was their opening day pitcher against Ole Miss when all she did was fan 15 batters and have a one-hit victory. 
She comes in to help preserve a 3-0 lead early in this one. Definitely holding most of the weight of this Oregon Duck team, pitching 23.2 innings this season with 32 strikeouts. So she's got some power. Her biggest point right here, she's coming in with a different look, a completely different look than Stevie Hampton. Hopefully knocks these Baylor hitters back, saves a run or two. Baylor has two base runners, but has not had to put a ball in play this inning. A walk and a hit batter. And here's Collazos, who has one of Baylor's two hits so far. That had a little something to do with the decision making, presumably. To Paul Hansen. New pitcher, and so her catcher Wong wants to make sure they're on the same page. And Clee Thermos was the former high school state Gatorade player of the year coming out of Wardsville, Missouri. Last year went seven and six on the season. Opposing hitters hit 2-11 against her. Boyazzo's already a hit today and also has caught a runner stealing from her side hustle as a catcher. Two on, nobody out. Good look right there. Her, the woman she threw out is uh, her counterpart, Wong, <laughs> who's now trying to keep the Bears as close as possible to their bases. Count one and two. Aaliyah Benford on deck in that cleanup spot, followed by Anna Watson. Two on, nobody out, only third base unoccupied. Tying run at the plate in the form of Koyanzos. Baylor handed Oregon its first loss of the year yesterday. Oregon handed Baylor its first loss of the year yesterday. You see Koyanzos at the beginning of this at bat. Looked like she got a squared up to try and bunt and then tried to do something a little bit more with that bunt. Now she's down two strikes and she's got to fight back here to see if she can move that runner able to wrap the barrel of the bat around on that one, but pulls it foul. Beyond the reach of Sid at third. Not very many people or coaches would want to bunt their number three batter, but when you've got speed like you've got on the bases here, having them 60 feet closer for your number four, five, and six batters are a whole, it's a whole lot more effective. The 2-2. Two -two. This one towards the gap in right center. It'll get down. They still had a force at second to be had, but that's a lot to compute in very little amount of time. Bases are loaded for Baylor with nobody out. So Collazos is two for two today. I don't think Jasmine Williams is thinking about the traditional nine to six put out at <laughs> second, but because the runner Wilson had to stay honest, they may have had her. She doesn't get all of this, but just enough to get it past the infield. It kind of hits it in that Bermuda Triangle there. Hard to catch. Makes a di diving effort. You got a close play right there at second base, but instinct is I'm going to go for the lead runner. They're going to third. Yeah. She's got an easy out there at second. In the end, getting another look. Not sure that there was an out to be had. Bases are loaded. They're going to run for Collazos. I believe it's Walkendorf who comes in. Freshman from down the road in Lorena. We've got the greater Waco area covered here. These Baylor players. And it doesn't get any easier now. Here's Aaliyah Benford. Bases loaded for Baylor. Tying run on third. That's one reason to run for Collazos. That is an important run over there on first base. It's 
see if some of the fans uh, start to make their way over from the Ferrell Center after the men's basketball game has just wrapped up. See how many of, of them notice there's a hint of sports <laughs> lingering in the air here. I in smell Waco. sports. Three batters have come to the plate. All have reached for Baylor this inning. Still looking for their first run. And Benford will poke this one foul. Count one and two. Obviously, there's a double play to be had. I don't think Oregon would give up on that just to get the out at home, since they do have a cushion. Not with the speed you have on the bases, too. And even the Benford is, is deceptively fast. Shallow left, Gailey. Does she have the arm to get the play at home? They're not going to test her. And it looks like it was the right choice by Glenn Moore to keep Emily Hunt at third, one away. Just not deep enough. Not much you can do with that. It was a great pitch, too. Just didn't, got underneath it. Almost like she was trying to hit for the home run here, wanting that grand slam. And got underneath it too much. Anna Watson last year, one home run in her 13 games. And 13 RBI to show for it. Tying run still on first with one out now. Still a chance for a big inning for Baylor. Again, they've already chased the starting pitcher, Stevie Hansen, who left with a 3-0 lead. Mechanically Thermos, your pitcher facing her third bear. And this one gift wrapped in foul territory for the Ducks. Bears again have to stay put. They loaded the bases, a walk, a hit batter, and a single. But since then, a pop out to left and a foul out. We talk about just the personal adjustments you can make pitch to pitch, not bat to a bat. But sometimes you got to learn from the person in front of you also. You watch what Aaliyah Benford did with that pitch, and you come in and you did the exact same thing. In this instance, you don't need a pop-up. You need a hard ground ball. You need a, something simple up the middle that gets through the infield, and you're going to score two runs easily. So it's just that mindset of approaching in the box. So here's Josie Bauer, who knows what it feels like to lead off an inning with a walk, and then your three teammates to follow you are unable to advance you even a base. This inning began with two free passes for Baylor. The walk for Hunt, who's on third. Wilson hit by pitch on second. Walkendorf, the pinch runner on first. Can Bauer help Baylor take that zero off the scoreboard? There's no doubt their mindset is, I want to. You can watch that from Watson and Benford. They come in there swinging big. They want to make that. They want to help their team. They want to get out of this knowing that the, the attack is so close. Um, it's just the approach. It's the little things you have to change as you step into the box. Lee Thurmas with a chance to get out of this inning, stranding three more Baylor base runners. Baylor stranded two in the first, one in the second. I would say Ducks are on the pond, but I feel like that might be confusing. Bears are on the bases. It hit her. It's an RBI hit by pitch for Josie Bauer. All the production this inning has been free passes, but Baylor will take it. They're back within two. As Emily Hunt comes home after her leadoff walk. Sometimes that is the luck of the game. I mean, you can put the effort in and you can try as hard as you can, but sometimes it's just the the ball off the elbow. Uh, the little 60-foot merry-go-round advances. Wilson now to third. Walkendorf, the pinch runner, to second. Bauer, a potential go-ahead run for Baylor is on. Here's Kendall Cross, who struck out for the first out last inning. And she finds herself ahead of the count. Got the only senior in the lineup right here. Want to make a difference. If she can have one of those good senior moments. One for the memory books. Ooh. Ooh. That was a little high. You don't want to, as an umpire, I mean, that's a tough call to make. 
as a batter, it's even harder because you don't want to start thinking, okay, that's yeah. the standard for a strike, and now she moves up in the zone even higher and higher. Bears have scored one. Base is still loaded with two outs. Count one and two. And now Cross really is going to be protecting that plate anything close. Here's where that mindset shifts. Now you're down, you got two strikes on you. You can't take the big swing that you did. You need to choke up and you're thinking something up the middle. It's the, not a lot of teams, not a lot of people practice that in, in practice and in the off season. You're always stepping in that box. You want to have the best swing and the big hit, but how often do you practice just choking up and putting up the middle? Well, Baylor scores one, but in the end, McKinnon-Clee Thermos comes in relief and strands four bears on the base pass. The Ducks through three innings still with a two-run lead intact here in Waco, Texas. Yeah, over here. I guess I'm right. I'm looking at. The Baylor able to get on the board a 3-1 score line as we head into the top of the fourth, but also have a chance now to check in with our head coach as we start first here in the top of the fourth with Glenn Moore. Hey, coach. You. Uh Kind of pulled one across right then. Nothing that really did with the bats, but it's frustrating and kind of leave some runners on base. What are you kind of telling your team here? Well, I, you know, not talking <laughs> to them a whole lot. They know it's pretty obvious mm -hmm. that we need to have quality at bats there. And we have had, uh, some, we've wasted too many at bats to this point. But to load the bases up and not get uh, but one run, it's a little disappointing. But hey, we got we cut the lead a little bit and uh, and we just need to keep fighting. We, fought, we ran a pitcher. Uh, that's a good thing. Now we got to get on this one. Yeah, you made great adjustments with a, a pitcher coming in um, and getting on her. Uh, what are you telling your pitchers here now? Well, we're going with uh, Aaliyah to th uh, change the uh, speed a little bit, a little different look. Uh, Dari uh, worked hard yesterday, a lot of pitches yesterday, and already up to 70 today, so it's time to make a change. Yeah, well, we look forward to seeing what she can do. Thank you. Thanks. And always appreciate Glenn Moore's time. And as he mentioned, he has, in fact, made a pitching change. His third baseman now moves into the circle. That being Benford, who for all three years has been a great option in the circle, as well as defensively on the left side of the diamond. She's a great option, period. I think if you were to look up and down the lineup, okay, who do you want to not hit the ball to? Who do you want to not face in the circle? And who do you want to not face in the box? You're gonna choose Aaliyah every time. So it'll begin with Rachel Sid out of the sixth spot in this lineup. Six, seven, and eight due up to face Benford now as both starting pitchers for game three have stepped aside. And that time, Hot will clean things up. You don't see that very often from Aaliyah. Even in the circle, she can continue to field her position really well. The ball just kind of bounces off her glove, but good for Hot to take that extra split second to make sure she's got a good throw. Boyazos, who was the catcher, moves to third base to plug the void at the hot corner. Got some TCU fans walking in. Some purple joining the crowd. I think Baylor fans have won them over. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. They probably heard there's some good softball going on, though. 
Dady Lavallee, of course, is uh, the new catcher now. With Collazo scoring to third. So a fresh battery here for Baylor. They're trying to keep it a two-run deficit. Benford falling behind 3-0 here. And so many times you see when you get into the spot of the game where you're behind or there's a lot of momentum, and then that's when you make a pick, pitching change. So you got to give credit to um, Coach Moore, but I'm, I'm assuming that it probably came from Coach Snead Newman too. Um, to recognize, hey, this could happen, and I don't want to get in a position where we increase that the deficit even more. Um, so we'll be proactive and, and let Aaliyah throw a little bit here in a, in a position where she can be ahead of the game and not playing from behind, not not coming into pitch with bases, uh, bases on, runners on base. I should say base is loaded, but. She's been able to get a couple strikes here on Wong, but Wong will earn the walk with one out. So Valerie Wong today, a single and a walk. With one away, that gives way to Hannah Gailey. And let's see if they run for Wong. Might pitch it here too. Oregon three runs on four hits today. Baylor one run on three hits. The Bears have stranded six runners through the first three innings. Neither starting pitcher still in this ball game. I believe Ariel Carlson's going to run for Wong just from listening. That is the case. Carlson, boy, they blew the recruiting budget on her. They had to go all the way to Eugene, Oregon <laughs> to make her a duck. It's the dream for kids in Eugene, I bet. No doubt. So Carlson runs for Wong. Herrera's pinch hitting here. Herrera hitting in the eight spot for Gailey. Pitch a strike from Benford to the third batter she faces here in the fourth inning. And able to retire the leadoff hitter, Sid, on a 1 4 3 ground out. Since then, a walk. Carlson coming on, Herrera into hit. That wind still blowing out towards right. The 0 2. And Glenn Moore entered this half inning with a new pitcher, catcher, and third baseman combo. Unable to hold up. And strike three, can't advance on a drop third strike with the runner on first. Kudos to LaValle for holding that runner at first base also. We saw last night a lot of those drop third strikes with first base occupied, with runners taking second. She does not allow that. They'll add another K to the combined pitching collection for Baylor. And here's Luchar, today's DP for Oregon, Kedry Luchar. Oregon plated one in the first when they brought five to the plate. Scored two in the third, last inning, and they brought six to the plate. Neither team has gotten a traditional three up, three down inning. A 
One one offering from Benford to Luchar. Unable to bunt that one into fair territory. One and two. Tries to show bunt real late there. See if we can catch corners on, catch him sleeping. Slap foul. And we mentioned a very busy weekend. I think 10 different Baylor events this weekend. And that one lined into the glove of Cross. And the Ducks are kept off the board in the top of the fourth. They bring four to the plate against Benford in relief as Baylor still within striking distance as we head into the home half of the fourth inning down by two. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oregon Ducks coming to town, looking to take the series against Big 12 member Baylor. 3-1 lead heading into the home half of the fourth. Now joined by head coach of the Ducks, Melissa Lombardi. We'll let Kelly take it away. Hey, Coach, you your hitters here are making great adjustments to this Baylor pitching. Uh, what is kind of your mindset? What have you been telling them leading into this game? I think just to trust their plan. I think we went away from our plan a little bit. So just staying uh, strong with their plan. Yeah, I can see it's real effective. Almost that slash hitting kind of gets your timing going. They've done, done real well with that. Is that kind of the same mindset you're telling your pitchers too? They look amazing. I think just, I think, you know, yesterday a little bit we went away from our plans, so I'm just trying to tell them to stay strong with what they're doing and trust and believe in what they're doing. Well, the, you're doing a great job with that, and, and, they're, and it's effective, so thank you. Thank you. Again, appreciate the time from both of our head coaches here today, Melissa Lombardi as well as Glenn Moore. I have to imagine uh, Coach Lombardi had some pretty decent food recommendations from previous experience and trips to Waco. Oh, Waco's changed so much, though. I mean, probably not in four years since she's been at Oregon, but it's changed a lot, especially since she's played here, played at Oklahoma. Zadie LaValle will be swinging a bat for the first time. Sophomore from Choctaw, Oklahoma. Saw Zadie in 43 games last year. And a couple of home runs and 19 RBI. It's pretty refreshing to hear Coach Lombardi just talk about how simple it is. Just trust the process, really. Trust the plan. As you, as you go on the season, you start facing these higher caliber teams, and you're on the road quite a bit, and you try and make adjustments here and there. Sometimes you can change your approach altogether, but you got to know, believe in what you've practiced and believe in what you're capable of. Baylor loaded the bases last inning. They had three free passes. In fact, they had an RBI hit batter to bring home their lone run. That inning was, you can talk about glass half full. Hey, you can get runners in bunches, glass half empty. Glenn Moore wishes they had been more productive with those runners. And both teams have brought in a relief pitcher as of this past inning. It's Cleethermis in, relief for Hansen. 
who left with a 3-0 advantage. Hanson charged for the Baylor run that came home. Emily Hunt, who had a walk last inning. And count 2-2. Two, two. You can just see the difference here uh, from Clethermas to Hanson. She works much more up in the zone, and she got that pitch last inning from the umpire, that called, called strike that was high, and she keeps working her way up there. Righty lefty matchup. Count goes full to LaValle. Casey West on deck, Emily Hot in the hole. The 3 2. And we'll do it again. Jeff getting a piece of that and fouling off that pitch. She's able to lay off one really up in the zone, but takes that one enough to foul it off. If you watch the way LaValle swings her bat here, her, even the way she sets up, her bat is flat almost. And so it's if she gets that, that rise ball pitch, she can, she's right on level with it. Seventh pitch of this plate appearance. And that one lined in the glove of KK Humphreys. She got on level and hit a hard line drive. You'd almost think that if that gets through, that might be a double down the line. Yeah, great snag by KK over at first. To help out her pitcher. And for LaValle, who was at the plate for the first time today, overall it was a nice at bat for her. Saw a lot of pitches. It gives way to K Casey West. West 0 for 1 today with a pop out. The shortstop back in the second inning. That was the final out that stranded Josie Bauer on the base pass back in the second. And Baylor has stranded six over the first three innings. And 0 2 count now to the nine hitter. So Thermos finally coming down in the zone, works that curveball on the outside corner and just can't. Can't even get a piece to foul it off. Casey West swinging a bat. Does a little bit of everything for Baylor. One of five pitchers on this year's team. Probably will see her in some pinch running as well this year. Do you dare say another Aaliyah Benford that can do it all? Her head coach dare said it. <laughs> it's a pretty good standard for the freshman to live up to. That's how you make your roster feel like it's bigger than it really is. You have a variety of movable pieces depending on who's pitching that day. And there are so many coaches that appreciate that, not just Coach Moore. You just want that, that diversity player. You want that utility player that can do it all. So I mean, a lot of you kids are playing softball real young, and you're like, well, I'm a shortstop, or I play second base. But you got to expand and, and learn every position. Um, it helps you learn the game more, but it helps you make you more versatile and be recruited. So Clee Thermos becomes the first pitcher for either team to retire the first two batters of an inning. Here's Emily Hunt in the top of the order for Baylor. Baylor's had at least one base runner every inning. Not the case here in the fourth. Let's see if Emily Hunt can prolong this fourth frame. The Thermos has done a nice job with a first pitch strike getting out ahead of Baylor batters this inning. And it'll level out one and one. Hunt, a strikeout and a walk today. Run scored last inning. It's definitely what you want to coach and you want to teach your players, your pitchers, too. Get ahead in the count. Never really had to get her heart rate up running the bases last inning. She walked, advanced on a hit batter, 
And then you had that single that dropped in. That moved her to third, and then she was able to trot home on another hit teammate. With two outs, the one two. Doing any favor for the Ducks. Hot, unable to poke it over Gailey out there and left. That is three bears up and three bears down in the fourth inning. So it remains a 3-1 score line as we head on to the fifth inning when you rejoin us here in Waco on Big 12 Now. Well, a great day for college softball. Uh, great to have college softball back underway. You take a look at the Big 12 programs in the top 10 of the preseason ESPN USA softball poll. No surprise that the Sooners are right there in pole position, but right behind them, the Cowgirls and Longhorns. Even the Cyclones getting some respect up there in Ames. Good competition in the Big 12 right there. Of course, uh, Melissa Lombardi's Ducks and a couple of polls ranked in the top 15. 12th where they finished last year and 13th is where we have them. I'd say the, the Pac-12 kind of mirrors that too. I know UCLA's I think ranked number three right now. And yeah, that's your preseason favorite. Anna Delgado leads things off for the Ducks as they seek more insurance here. Third time for the top of the order to appear. First time she faces Bentford in the circle. Bentford stepped into the circle last inning, faced four, walking one, but retiring the rest. Delgado today one for two with a single back in the third inning. Ball bounced so many times, it's hard to tell where it hit first. <laughs> and you have the combo of Lavalley behind the plate, Benford in the circle. Bouvier has re entered at shortstop defensively after Lavalley <laughs> batted on her behalf in that eight spot. If you're not scoring at home, you're welcome. <laughs> Probably best on this uh, mental health awareness week. <laughs> you gotta thank that flex spot in the softball game for that. It gets really confusing, but if you understand it, it can be a huge advantage for you. 
I still have some analysts who I see umpires come up to before games just to clarify things <laughs> in, in the sense that the analyst knows the, all the rules and the umpires might occasionally have some questions. It can get complicated. <laughs> it's fielded cleanly. They do not record it as an out, but good hands in the crowd here at Getterman. Erupted there. Uh, crowd erupted with that catch. Good news for Hannah Delgado is she still gets to swing a bat. The 2 2 from Benford. Little half check swing. That's a fair ball. And Benford's replacement, Coyazos, with the throw across the diamond. In time, one away. Always finish the play. You never know how it, if that ball is going to be considered a fair foul. But on defense, you field that ball and you doesn't hurt to make the throw. And now here comes Paige Sinicki, who has scored twice today. Two of Oregon's three runs. She walked in the first, reached on a fielder's choice in the third. First time to see Benford now. And there tries to bunt to reach safely. He tried to do it again. This won't have the element of surprise. And Sinicki out of Henderson, Nevada. Had that three-run blast in the sixth inning last night to tack on three more runs to the Ducks' lead. Ultimately a victory for Oregon. Count one and one. With one out, nobody on for Oregon. Just looking for insurance now. Chopper foul. An entirely artificial foul territory in outfield. We do have a real dirt infield. That's not always a given. Sometimes the carpet's just a different color. I kind of appreciate that. Something about playing softball on dirt. Benford able to fan Sinecki, who's kept off the base pass for the first time today. I appreciate playing on the grass, but the climate down here, I can see how the turf would be beneficial. So many times we couldn't get on the outfield because of drainage and you kind of build the drainage in with grass, but still you have mud and the ball. I mean, I think it was my senior year, senior day. We almost couldn't play the game because it had rained so much. And you have tarp for the, for the dirt on the infield, but you pull that tarp into the outfield and you can't get all that water anywhere. So we're out there with cups and buckets and trying to get it off and something these kids will never know. <laughs> And my understanding is that if you don't get to play your senior day, then you get to come back the next year. Uh, hey, I don't, I'll be okay with that. That was a pre-pandemic bonus year. <laughs> uh, my guess is Allie Bunker found that ball off of herself and is given a moment to regroup. Allie today, an RBI single in the first inning to give Oregon its initial lead. Reached on an infield error that, remember, in the third should have ended that inning with a scoreline of one nothing. This could be a tied ball game, but a couple of unearned runs, including Bunker, would ultimately score in that third inning. This in baseball, we talk about unearned runs. No, no other sport do we say, <laughs> yeah, you, you scored, but. Yeah. Not going to hold it against an uh, individual player. Well, likewise, how many how many sports can you name where you control the ball on defense? Yeah. Now that's where I feel for uh, our friends at Baylor Vision on the production side. <laughs> There's a lot more to juggle with these diamond sports. Uh, tip of the cap to uh, some very advanced jugglers and uh, our Producer Sarah Casper and director Davis DeLoach. Busy weekend for them. Mentioned it's about every sport underway. Yeah. 
Two balls, two strikes. Benford has now retired the first two batters this inning. Looking for the per first perfect frame for Baylor's defense after they went three up, three down against the Ducks last half inning. If Bunker can extend this fifth, you've got KK Humphreys on deck. She had that RBI double that took advantage of the Bears' miscue in the third. Benford would rather wait to see Humphreys next inning. If she can retire Bunker here. That ball died down. This is where it's helpful to have a former shortstop in the circle and on a bang bang play, they say Bunker legged it out. Will we have a review? Or does this inning continue? What a great punt, a <laughs> swinging punt. Aaliyah makes a great job of just picking up that ball and throwing, throwing from the low spot, but can't get it there in time. Looked to be the right call. So Bunker is aboard. For KK Humphrey is already with an RBI double in the third inning. And excuse me, swing back to Benford. So no damage done from a moment ago. So no perfect inning, but a shutout inning will keep us at a three to one Oregon Ducks lead heading into the sixth when you rejoin us here on Big 12 Now. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs, better with Pepsi. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, bikes for the whole family are just a click away. Buy online at academy.com with our free in-store assembly. Your next set of wheels plus helmets, pads, and water bottles will be waiting for you at our in-store pickup counter. Get to the fun faster with our in-store pickup and free assembly at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> I am advancing research at a nanoscale. My work is for a cleaner source of energy for every forest threatened by acid rain. For every patient in need of a precise diagnosis. Baylor University is fearlessly shining a light on the world's toughest challenges with compassion, curiosity, and courage. Well, it's been a treat for the past two days as Pac-12, Big 12 colliding, the Ducks and Bears. Every now and then you have to remind yourself which team is which in the green and gold. Oregon kind enough to wear the black today. Lincoln Rose, Kelly Levesque with you, along with our crew here in Waco. Big thanks to all the men and women involved. Some of them have to imagine, boy, for a 12 o'clock start on a Saturday, I set an alarm to wake up in time for that. <laughs> I imagine we have some decent viewership numbers just on the college campus down the road. I bet we do. Well, couldn't quite get showered and dressed in time to go across the street to the, the ballpark. I'll have a chance to see some baseball coming up as well. Today and tomorrow, you mentioned Maryland is in town. Facing Steve Rodriguez's Bears on the diamond. Can Oregon hang on and take the final two games of this three-game series before heading out of town? As the thermos continues in relief, quick snag by Sid across the diamond over to Humphreys. And just like that, Mackenzie Wilson retired. Not many times Mackenzie Wilson can hit a ground ball and get thrown out first. 
first time she's not going to be able to run the bases. Wilson uh, has been stranded on third twice in this ball game. After reaching on an error and a hit by pitch. This time grounds out. So here's Sydney Collazos, who is two for two today. A pinch ran for her in the third with Walkendorf before she re-entered. We've seen Collazos catch. We've seen her play third. Where else would you like to see her? Well, we saw Zadie LaValle play a little first base last night. I was thinking another catcher playing another position. And how about the uh, some evidence there that Collazos did start this game as catcher as she knows the strike zone. <laughs> Just watches that one miss wide. One out, nobody on for Sydney. And she gets behind this one. Over the head of Gailey, off the wall, looking for extra bases. And it's a stand-up double for Sydney Collazos with one away. Just a solid double. Hit well, hit strong. No doubt about it. You can tell it was going over her head from the moment it left the bat. She is three for three today. Can the Bears bring her home for the first time? Just a great piece of hitting. Almost got jammed on that ball, too. You kind of wonder if your hands get out a little bit more, does that ball go over the fence? Meanwhile, here's your cleanup hitting pitcher now in Aaliyah Benford. She would love to be the pitcher of record when this game is over. See if she can help out that cause right here. She represents the tying run at the plate. Do you get the save at that point? I wouldn't. <laughs> now she, she would hope to get the win. And dude, if you want to bring, uh, bring back Orm for the save. <laughs> A few things have to happen before all this. We won't make Katie Gilmore the SID uh, think too hard about any of these scenarios just yet. Or any of our viewers. <laughs> they're just here to enjoy the game. And whatever they're having for lunch. Again, Benford, a fly out to left and a fly out to right today, 0 for 2. Piazzo's the runner on second. 2-0, launch to left, but it's going to hang up there. Underneath it is Gailey, and with that ball going to left, no chance for Piazzo's to advance anywhere. Two away. Another just miss hit, almost trying to do too much with that at bat again. Hits the ball hard, but definitely hits it higher than she hit it lengthwise. But hitting it to left field, hit in front of the runner, you have no chance of moving the runner at all. Or at least our last pop fly we had goes out to right field and you get to move second to third. Gives way to Anna Watson trying to extend this inning. A strikeout and foul out so far today for Anna. It's going to be pulled foul. Anna out of Hewitt, Texas. Fourth bat of this inning. Yazo's still the runner on second. After her double, gives her the first extra base hit of the day for Baylor. Count 0-2, and, and now Lee Thermos is one pitch away from stranding a seventh bear on the afternoon. No bear stranded last inning as it went in order. With a runner on second, the 0-2 pitch got a piece of it and fell. Misses. 
again, I just keep looking at our surroundings. Just a fantastic crowd here. Oregon fans are well represented, but certainly the folks in Waco and surrounding areas have come out. They've been craving the return of college softball. Baylor treated them to a victory in game one yesterday. They find a comeback here. Definitely enjoying the weather too. And nobody had to get a dog sled to come. <laughs> Not this week. The 2-2 two -two to Watson. Again, fighting to keep this inning going with Collazo still on second after she found her third hit on the day with that double. It's a good look at the, the crowd today. I mean, on radio, we could just tell you it's a good crowd. But we can actually show you some proof here on Big 12 now. The Thermos can just focus on the hitter here. Two outs, the 2-2 offering hitter. And they are going to award the base to Anna Watson. Third Baylor batter hit by pitch today. You hate to be Cleet Thermos and just battle through that at bat. We probably throw 10 plus pitches as Anna Watson just kept fouling him off and that's how you end it. Well, you're back to having the tying run on base for Baylor. Still have a couple of innings potentially to go, but don't want to leave it all to the final at bats. No sign of any pinch runners yet. And you can't run for Collazos unless you want to pull her for the rest of the day. Already ran for her back in the third. Here's your DP, Josie Bauer, who twice has reached on free passes, including that RBI hit by a pitch back in the third inning. That scored Emily Hott back in the third to make it a 3-1 score line. That's where we still sit now two innings later. First offering from Clee Thermos, still looking for that elusive third out. Fifth Baylor batter this inning, Josie Bauer. The fourth ball in a row she's thrown. I think that's right. Last one, of course, hit Watson. We've seen how effective she's been when she comes right out the batter and throws that first pitch strike. That'll level things up. Right now, Kendall Cross is scheduled to bat next out of the seventh spot. Bottom third of the order for Baylor, 0 for 6 today. And that's the part of the lineup that would need to come through here, either this inning or next, presumably. Two on, two out. And back-to-back -back strikes now by McKenna, who took exception to uh, the broadcast analyst, keeping track of how many pitches failed to meet the strike zone. I think if we were down in College Station, the crowd would be letting her know. <laughs> right back to the glove of Cleve Thermos, and that's your inning. Baylor will strand two more, including the potential tying run at first. McKenna Clee Thermos able to field her circle and keep a two-run lead intact for Oregon. They're back at the plate in the sixth.
Back on Big 12 now, five innings in the books. Ducks coming back to the plate here in the top of the sixth, looking to build on a two-run lead. We welcome you back into the broadcast booth, Lincoln Rose, Kelly Levesque. And Kelly, again, the goal of non-conference play isn't to go undefeated. It's to learn as much about your team and personnel this year as possible and position yourself both for a strong conference run and get that resume together for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Oregon wanting to make another run again, just like they did last year, and Baylor too for that matter. But Baylor's got such a young team. Coach Moore's really trying to figure out who plays best in what position and, and who, which, who are its top nine batters, top ten batters. Um, you want to see great pitching from both sides. Uh, to look at different pitch patterns and see how um, effective that is going into the season. So you definitely want the wins for those RPI scores, um, and that's why you play the big games. But you definitely just want to knock some rust off too and, and see what we're capable of. Both teams, again, already have a quality win against one another yesterday in that double header. Let's see who can capture the series with today's rubber match. And that pitch merited a strike call on its own. As I believe this is Kai Luchar. Seeing her sister Kedri today. This is, I believe, the first time we've seen her this weekend. Redshirt freshman. So Luchar hitting in the five spot as a pinch hitter for Williams. After Williams had grounded out twice today. Just her sixth at, sixth at bat of the season. As we ground out over to the right side, Kendall Cross able to scoop it up and easily touch the bag for out number one. Gives way to Rachel Sid. Benford has not allowed a leadoff batter to reach during her watch in relief. Sid 0 for 2 today. Each time it was hot. Tossing one of the glove across for the final out. One of those ground outs was deflected by Benford in the circle. And Sid 0 for 2. You'd just feel a little bit better if you could give your pitchers another run. After Baylor was able to claw one back, back in the third inning. You love to see that change up Leah Benford just threw. She was throwing it so effectively last night. Hadn't really quite worked it into the her pitching rotation this, this game. But she looks good throwing that. You will accept your compliment and retire the first two batters. I see Dari Orme, Orme back there too, kind of cheering her on. Excited about that strikeout. All right, back to the seventh spot of the order, Valerie Wong today, a single and a walk. really relying on that towel on the back. Dry those hands off. Benford has quietly retired. Seven of the last eight ducks she has faced. And there's that change up again. Back to after Wong walked in the fourth, only one more.
Baylor with two innings presumably remaining to overcome a two-run deficit. We mentioned bottom third of the order for Baylor today is 0 for 6, so we will see a pinch hitter here in the seventh spot. It's Ryan Trocum, homegrown from right here in Waco, went to Midway High School. Of course, started her college career in Big Ten country with the Illini. And although that may seem like an odd route to go to land it. It's easier to fly and then come back down south. But Trocum, your pinch hitter here. Lee Thermos, remember, that will squeeze a line out into her glove to end last inning to strand two more Bears. Baylor has stranded eight. Each team with one earned run by my count. But the Ducks able to capitalize on some Baylor miscues back in that third inning or some insurance that has proven since to be much needed. Ryan came here with Illinois. We actually saw her little supporters group wearing Illinois colors. And also some midway colors, I think, mm -hmm. to be as neutral as possible. But I have to imagine most of that orange and blue is gone for you know, more convenient green and gold. And a pinch hit walk. To set the table in the sixth. Baylor's only run today has come after a leadoff walk. The third yeah. inning now that they've let off with a free pass. Lady LaValle continues to hit in the eighth spot. Where we initially saw Bouvier bat on her own behalf. And let's see what Melissa Lombardi has in store. That is going to be a change in the circle as well. So we will step aside here at Ketterman Stadium. It's a three to one ball game. Baylor bringing the tying run to the plate. Ducks making the change in the circle. We'll get you the new name when you come back. Third pitcher of the day for the Ducks, all of whom have pitched with a lead. This is Jordan Dale now who comes on, inheriting a two-run advantage in a save situation. So you get to see Jordan Dale again. Great left-handed pitcher, super efficient yesterday. Uh, holds 19 strikeouts on the season, just one walk. So she's going to come right at these batters. We talked about it yesterday some, but that left-handed pitch just comes in a little wonky. So see if Baylor can make the adjustments from, from yesterday. Lee Thermos came on in the third inning, has ultimately faced 14 Baylor hitters. Again, the lone Baylor run did come home while she was in the ball game, but it's charged to Hansen. Lee Thermos presumably would be in line for the victory since Hansen did not pitch the required number of innings. 
Obviously that all relies on Dale to come up with a save. Ryan Trocum had the leadoff walk. She stands on first. The Valley at the plate represents the tying run for Baylor. Oof. That curveball did not curve. Went right at her. Another hit batter, fourth of the day by the Oregon staff. She had nowhere to go. Right off that upper calf. With that left-handed pitcher, you'd see a, a lot of times that curveball come right at that, right at the hitter and then curve right over the plate. That one did not move. So that moves Trocum to second. The Valley is your tying run on first. Here's Casey West looking to produce out of the ninth spot. And this is a welcome development for Baylor. Because now all of a sudden, a sacrifice could bring home a run. And Baylor wouldn't mind uh, seeing a couple runs come home before this inning's all said and done. A rocky start to the relief appearance here from Dale. See Trocum running almost as the pitch was released. Not necessarily a steal, but she saw that that ball is headed up in the zone. Never really hesitated, knowing that, hey, I need to get to third to try and score this run. Um, have a look. And just knows right away. I just saw a duck sprint out to the bullpen. It's weird that he ran and not flew. Different duck. That's a talented. All right, let's see what the mindset is for West now. Things have changed. Runners two in scoring position. And this would be welcomed for the Ducks, but it gets back into the mesh. Thought for a moment there, Oregon would get a cheap out for out number one. Let's see if Casey can make an adjustment from pitch to pitch now. She fouls that one back. She got a... a Lucky bounce that it hit the net. Just got to get on top of this. Remember, all you need right here is a ground ball through the infield. You don't need a double to the wall, though that'd be nice, and a home run would be nice, but you just need something through the infield. Tying run on second for Baylor with nobody out. We saw the line there for West, looking for her first RBI of the year. And her Baylor career here. Yeah. Just a freshman out of Liberty High. Trocum walk, she's on third. LaValle was hit by a pitch, she's on second. The one two from Dale above the letters. Again, Baylor has more often than not had base runners and often in scoring position today. They have stranded eight over the first five innings. A big cut from West, who wanted to give Baylor its first lead right there, but instead is out number one. Just chase that rise ball up in the zone. That'll give way to the only Baylor Bear who has scored today. Let's get another look. Just way up there. <laughs> Third batter already for Jordan Dale to face in relief this inning. Hot walked and scored in the third. First pitch she sees. Sid says she has it in foul territory, out number two. Second time today, Baylor's led off an inning with two free passes. The other time was back in the third when Wilson was hit by a pitch after the walk. Emily Hunt. Maybe the third time today. Well, back to back free passes. A second time, third time a free pass overall is led off an inning. Looks 
They've certainly made these innings interesting for Baylor. Putting the Oregon defense to work here, testing them out. Oregon struck for their first run in the first inning. Each team played it a run in the third. The Ducks scoring two. Baylor pulling one back. Been three to one since then. Baylor with two in scoring position here. Last two batters retired. Will this ball get down in a huge gap in right field? It's a brand new ball game as Mackenzie Wilson with two outs brings a pair home. Trocum in the valley. You love to see the smile there. She probably thought got jammed. I didn't get all of it. I popped it up again. But that just dropped right down the line. She's able to get double bases from it. Absolutely nobody home in right field. They were pulled all the way over. Right fielders almost playing center field. And you certainly would have scored one, but that easily brought home the tying run. And now you have incredible speed at second base. So the RBI, two run. Base hit, a nice snag by Sid. And the Ducks, one pitch, too late. Baylor strikes for two runs in the bottom of the sixth. As Oregon just looking to reestablish a lead in the top of the seventh. Otherwise, Baylor's going to have a chance maybe to walk this one off. New Highlander, Mr. D? Yeah. Well, it was time for a change. For something nicer, more refined, with plenty of space. Comfy, Derek? Yes, sir. Elevate every ride in the spacious 2021 Highlander. Toyota, let's go places. Helping those who help others. That's the mission of Charity Champions, a program designed to support nonprofits in Central Texas. Charity Champions started in 2014 to celebrate TFNV Your Bank for Life's 125th anniversary. Champions get a marketing awareness campaign, leadership training, and a team of interns at no charge to the organization. Seven years, 43 champions, and we are just getting started. Learn more at charitychampions.org. on Big 12 now, there has been a development. We are level, three runs apiece. Baylor strikes. And what looked like it was just going to follow the way the first several innings had gone, get some runners on, get your hopes up. But no, no runners uh, left on uh, by Mackenzie Wilson, who came through with a two-run base hit in the sixth with two outs to tie this one up. And now the Ducks, who have led ever since that top of the first inning, are looking to reestablish a lead against Benford, who has been pretty near brilliant in relief. Yeah, Baylor finally being able to take advantage of that uh, free base, um, score some runs to it. They've been chomping at the bit, taking a bite every inning, just about finally getting to score two here. A huge hit by McKenzie Wilson. Fourth inning of relief now for Benford. Who has retired all but two of batters she has faced. Gailey batting in the eighth spot. We saw Gabby Herrera bat for her back in the fourth inning. Both struck out in their opportunities at the plate. Tries to find a way on, on base herself here. 
Got right now the DP, Kedri Luchar, scheduled to bat next. In the top of the order with Delgado. The one two from Benford. Herrera patiently sitting back on that one, waiting for it to break. Doesn't happen. Benford so far, through the first three innings, one hit allowed, one walk allowed. And a drop third strike, throw down to first, not in time. Will that be the difference in the ball game? Well, Valley had to dance with the umpire there a little bit. Because of... Still made it close. See, Trocum has remained in the ball game. This is kind of when you try and manufacture a run here. You get a free pass at first. See if we can bunt and move her over, try and score a run, get a runner in scoring position. Bouchard over two. First two pitches off the mark as Benford's been expecting Luchar to square around. Corners definitely pulled in expecting that. And top of the order waiting in the wings for Oregon. Number eight hitter came through in a moment ago, albeit with a little help on a drop third strike. And a delayed cut. Almost like a hit and run, slap and run there. I don't know why you would slap and run. You need to get the swing so far away from the catcher. And then your runner at first doesn't move at all either, so. Yeah, it was a 2-0 offering. Not like she had to protect. That ball is going to die down. Beautiful bunt. Executed perfectly by Lushar. So the eight and nine hitters have come through. Still three outs to work with for Oregon this inning and two aboard. And maybe that's why you slap and run. Kind of to show, hey, I'm swinging, I'm not bunting. Pulls the corners back just enough to drop a bunt right in front of them. See if you can watch LaValle's effort defensively and just see the gears in her head moving saying, you don't see it in that angle, but we're all thinking, does that ball have enough to carry foul? And you realize, no, no, it doesn't. You must play that ball to have a chance. That is bunted foul by Delgado. I mean, LaValle didn't hesitate. She waited, immediately recognized that ball, was not going to go foul, snagged it. But it was just a perfect bunt from Luchar. Did LaValle end up doing that, or was that Collazos? Looked like they were both close. I mean, the bunt was perfect You're right. right in the middle. It was one of today's catchers for Baylor. <laughs> There's one of the third basemen. <laughs> Oregon's already gone to their third pitcher today, Benford. First individual out of the quote bullpen for Baylor. And the count, Delgado now, one and two. A lot going on with this Baylor infield, with two on. And pulled in. That's why it's tough to keep that lead runner honest. Left side, it's going to get through. Play at the plate, not in time. And Oregon has reclaimed a lead here in Waco. Riley Bouvier was just caught in a no-win situation there at shortstop. That's exactly how you manufacture a run and why you do what you do. You get a free pass at first, you try and bunt her over, the bunt ends up being successful, so now you're doing the same position with, less, with no outs. And then you just hit a ground ball through the middle. 
And it, I, that's Selman, isn't it? No, I, uh, I believe it's Bouvier so. But she definitely tries to field that ball up the middle and has got nowhere to go as the runner's going right at her. Kind of wonder if she made contact, which she can't do. It's almost better if you kind of run into her. So Oregon, a half inning removed from seeing their lead evaporate. Yeah, it is Selman okay. who is tested coming in at shortstop. And again, with that defense all sucked in, uh, what would have otherwise been a routine play, an opportunity for the Ducks. And honestly, with your, your speed and a slap hitter there, you have to be pulled in to make that play. But with the runner at second, you, she can't get over there. That bunt does go foul. So Emily Hott is the only player on the dirt right now who is still playing the position she started this game at. Starting catcher has gone to third, third baseman to pitcher. Brought in a new shortstop and first baseman over the past few innings. And the woman who hit the three-run blast last night is hopefully going to be able to shake that one off. Fortunately, she did have a little protection on, but you certainly heard it. So Nikki is on the bases for a third time. So it might take an extra second to shake off. You definitely heard it. It's like a hit on the, the inside arm that isn't covered. That's four Ducks who have come to the plate now. None have been retired. Yeah, missed that protection altogether and got the, that top arm, top hand. Remember the run that has scored this inning. Gailey reached because of a drop third strike. Oregon not letting up here, still pressing on. A bunt that went about a foot in front of the batter's box, followed by a single that probably is not a single other than the scenario that pulls in the infield and now a hit batter. Base is loaded for Bunker. And an RBI single back in the first. Oregon's Four runs on seven hits so far. Neither team has scored more than two runs in an inning. And the Ducks break this one open. They want to make it as hard as possible for Baylor to walk this one off in the bottom of the seventh. Baylor's got the middle third of its lineup due up. That one gets through as well. Ducks lead has now doubled as they are ahead five to three. Bunker with her second RBI today. Just a great piece of hitting, knowing I gotta have something out of the infield, even more so. I've gotta have something on the right side to hit behind my runners moving forward. Takes that outside pitch. Just puts the bat on it. Lushar, who had that fantastic bunt, has now scored. Moves Delgado to third, Sinicki to second. And Collazos now will exit the ball game. Presumably that will put Benford at third. If that third strike isn't dropped, you just think about how all of this is completely different. Absolutely. We'll step aside. We'll introduce you to the third arm for Baylor when you rejoin us here on Big 12 Now.
Rachel Hurtenberger comes on for Baylor, the former Houston Cougar. In fact, uh, she faced Baylor last year, actually beat the Bears, part of a doubleheader between the Cougars and Baylor. Again, of course, in the future, that will be a Big 12 matchup when those two are reunited, old Southwest Conference foes. But Hurtenberger wasn't willing to wait. She wanted to get to Waco as soon as possible, so here she is in the circle. She's from Alvin, Texas, of course, the birthplace backyard of Nolan Ryan. Rachel throwing six innings, working six innings um, this year. We saw a couple from her last night, maybe one. So KK Humphreys is the sixth Oregon batter to come to the plate this inning. Two runs have scored, bases are still loaded. Nobody out. And really the base hits we've seen this inning have only gotten through because frankly Baylor's situa the situation has called for them to pull in and has made them vulnerable. All dates back to the first bat of this inning, reaching on a drop third strike. And I think the most skillful effort this inning by a duck bat was that of Luchar and a perfect bunt. That bunt. She has since scored, along with Gailey. Delgado on third. Sinecki, who's hit by pitches on second. Bunker, who like Delgado, singled. They'll run first. Did she foul the ball off? Everybody seemed to think so based on their <laughs> body language. They're not moving. She would have nowhere to go, but a runner on third might consider coming home. But at some point, that ball hit the dirt. So I can't tell if it bounced and then she fouled it off or if she fouled it off into the ground and it bounced backwards. Which would impress you more? I think fouling off the ball out of the ground. Base is loaded. And... Well, Zadie Lavalley was actually the odd player out in that exchange because Coyazos, when Glenn Moore said, you're out, he meant, go get the gear back <laughs> yeah. up. So Coyazos is catching again with Benford back at third. That goes back to that DP flex player. So three singles, a hit batter, and a drop third strike so far this inning. Have included Baylor from recording an out so far. Bears certainly still within striking range if they can just keep it. Just a two-run deficit going into the bottom of the seventh. Off speed, that ball gets down, and the Oregon lead grows from a 5-3 advantage now to 7-3. Delgado and Sinecki both come home. Great piece of hitting right there. She earned each of those RBIs with that at bat. So KK Humphreys now with three RBI today. Picked up her first back in the third inning. Number seven to number uh, Carissa Ornelas, the former UCF Knight. Goes back to the West Coast to suit up for Oregon. She's from Marietta, California. And she's going to bat here in the five spot. Get a look. Uh, a nice piece of hitting for Humphreys that scored two. Taylor Strain out there wanted to make that play. Sorry, Casey West out there wanted to make that play. Thinking I'm, I'm going to die for this and then realizes it's just too far away. Fields it cleanly and gets the ball in quick. Mentioned Ornelas from UCF. Of course, that'll be another new addition to the Big 12 as well in a couple years. <laughs> My guess is Hardenberger has probably seen Ornelas back at American Athletic Conference. have some 
viewers in Marietta, California watching on. Definitely up in Oregon. Oh, I thought you meant just to hear you. No, no. I'm thinking just all the people, who, it's amazing how much now that you, these games are televised. I know my parents probably would have loved to be able to watch me in California. Kind of tune in anywhere. I know there's some family of Coach Moore probably tuning in down in Mississippi or at the Mardi Gras Parade in Louisiana. Ornelas again is the seventh batter this inning. No outs. Definitely not letting off the throttle. Well, you mentioned we have a Louisiana audience, don't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, down a, I believe the, the Mardi Gras parade down there celebrating. Is the weather as nice down there as it is here? Though? Launch towards center. Wilson goes back to the warning track. There's your first out. It's a great job tracking that ball down. Kind of has to turn a little bit for the wind. It is deep enough to move that lead runner, but just a heads up play to keep that the runner at first there. Bunker, as you note, know, does go to third. Humphreys has to hold up at first. And another look. Turns her feet, never takes her eyes off the ball, though. Uh, a lot of times you'll want to, you'll see kids or people do a head flip to try and get that ball, and then you lose sight of it. So that wind kind of swirls back there by the by the wall. Rachel Sid is 0 for 3 today, out of the six spot. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. As she faces Hurtenberger here. Able to get one out here. Have a first and third situation. Base is loaded. Is that that fifth hit pitch this game? Second this inning. Both teams are going to have some bruises. <laughs> Might make that flight for Oregon a little less comfortable. Rather take it off the thigh than the. That, that I don't know. I don't know if I want that one either. So Valerie Wong's the ninth batter of the inning. Remember Baylor last half inning tied this ball game up three apiece. But that first out in the top of the seventh hard to come by. Four runs had scored before securing the first out this inning and a new pitcher had to be introduced along the way. Yeah, you kind of go off that momentum. All right, we, we tied it. Let's see if we can Get three up, three down, shut them down, come back and, and finish what we started. And it's just taking a little longer, a little bit more bumps along the way. Long's been the constant at catcher for three different pitchers today for Oregon. And almost the base runner, Bunker, did get back in time, but that ball was placed right where Benford needed it to have a chance. Yeah, so great throw, almost caught her off guard. You don't see her diving back, you just see her kind of running back and might have had a chance. Oregon seven runs on nine hits, looking for more here. And Wong not tempted at that one. Well, Oregon does have a flight to catch, but I don't think we're uh, really in jeopardy of them missing it just yet. The cutoff time for this game's in a, another 40 minutes. Big cut from Wong, and that will 
It's in the count four. It's interesting she decides to swing at that pitch with a 3-1 count. I think she sees the, the flags fl <laughs> whipping around out there and thought maybe she could uh, break one wide open, maybe break a windshield along the way. And the count will stay full. Again, Oregon tied for third in the preseason Pac-12 poll. Went off uh, a finish last year, top 12 in the nation, a 40 and 17 campaign. Baylor certainly look forward to getting Big 12 play underway next month. Picked fourth in that talented league. And another foul ball. On deck is Gailey. Benford struck her out. Uh, able to reach on the drop third strike, the first of four ducks to score this inning. Long can pack a punch. I was more impressed with the angle of that hit. It was almost straight behind her, but it's not because it fouled back. It was because she pulled it that far. That may have reached some of the baseball fans who are tailgating, <laughs> and imagine they probably think that was a strange-looking baseball. Base is loaded for Oregon, as they have been much of this seventh inning. Wong slowly left side. Selman snags it, has a debate, and there's no out to be recorded. Instead, it's 8-3 Oregon as Bunker comes home. Don't know quite what happened there. <laughs> Look like we got a, a, they got a good ground ball. Fielded it cleanly. Coach Moore is going to talk to his team. Switch pitchers out. Fourth pitcher for Baylor will be Marin Judish. One of the returning arms for Baylor this year. Third pitcher of the inning, Baylor. It's about to see their 10th duck hitter with just one out secured so far. Well, we mentioned Judish comes on, third different pitcher this inning, fourth pitcher of the day for Baylor. Final game of this three-game series, so Baylor's not necessarily trying to save arms for anything, but they're trying, still trying to give themselves a chance to win this series, but the Ducks are enjoying their largest lead of the day after putting a five spot up already this inning. Let's see the numbers for Marin. Hadn't pitched a whole lot this season yet. Uh, definitely last year put some good numbers up for Baylor. And this season she's pitched four innings already, has two strikeouts, walked three people. Hannah Gailey dropped third strike all the way back in this inning. <laughs> the first of five Ducks to score already. It wouldn't be until the seventh batter of this inning that an out was recorded. Comes in a hit batter and an infield single by Wong. So Gailey comes up with bases loaded. 
He's officially 0 for 2, but that's a pretty good 0 for earlier this inning. <laughs> It's been free passes and singles, many of the singles. Again, you could point back to how that drop third strike forced Baylor into an uncomfortable defensive alignment. I think we've seen one solid base hit into the outfield and one beautiful bunt laid down. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, a nondescript five run top of the seventh. Well, you've got to give Valerie Wong some credit for that ball she just hit too. Yep. Campbell Selman had to dive for that ball, and uh, Benford goes for it too. And no one covering third. She doesn't really have a play at first anymore because the Valerie, you know, hustles down first base. And the throw goes over, but it's not in time. Wong is on the bases for the second time today. Third time, pardon me. Judish in the circle. Still bases loaded with one out. And there's out number two. Our second strike out of the inning. Yes. Well, and often you hate being two of the three outs in an inning, <laughs> but she's only one of the three outs in this inning. Kayazos make sure to catch that ball cleanly this time. There's a different catcher there uh, that at bat for her. With yes. <laughs> All right, here's Kedri Luchar. We've seen both sisters in this ball game for Oregon. She put down that bunt earlier this inning. That just died right in front of the batter's box. Was able to beat it out. That was back when it was still a tie ball game, three all. Probably not looking for a bunt in this situation. Up the middle, gets through. As the Ducks now with a six run, top of the seventh, Luchar has had herself a nice seventh inning. So this inning she's had a beautiful bunt and a beautiful line drive right up the middle. That scores KK Humphreys who had the two runs batted in here in the seventh. Short and compact, straight through it. Looks like it hits right off of Selman's glove. Back to the top of the order, Hannah Delgado. It's the 12th batter of this inning. Kiyaz was keeping that ball in front of her. That goal, ball go, gets behind her, they might be it. Delgado, two for four today. That batting average up to 419 here in the early going of the season. Count level at one and one. So your base runners, Sid, Wong, and Luchar now on first, sec uh, pardon me, third, second, and first respectively. Judish's glove looks like it was stolen out of the visitor's dugout. <laughs> it does match their colors a little bit closer. Ooh. Great off speed pitch floating in there. Ducks nine runs on 11 hits. Five of those 11 hits have been singles this inning. That'll get away. Base is no longer loaded. As Sid comes home the final 60 feet. After she was hit by a pitch earlier this top half of the seventh. Okay, Yazos does her best job to try and keep that ball in front. But hit too much dirt beforehand. And Baylor has Benford, Watson, and Bauer scheduled. Middle third of the order due up. Whenever that bottom of the seventh comes around. 
Payoff pitch. And that one does hang up long enough to secure the third and final out, but not before 12 Ducks come to the plate, seven of whom score. After a short-lived tie ball game, Baylor faces a seven-run deficit in the home half of the seventh. Home half of the seventh inning. Well, Baylor is coming off its most productive half inning with bats in their hands when they scored the tying run in the bottom of the sixth. But Oregon, opportunistic, came through in the top of the seventh, trying to take care of business here in this regularly scheduled programming of seven innings. Sure. I mean, you start small ball, you get a you get a runner on base. We're like, okay, we're going to manufacture this run. We're going to try and get a run across. And by doing so, they. they put the pedal to the metal, go full throttle, and they can never just let up. Open the floodgates. Well, the nice thing about being a pitcher who also swings a bat, you can try to take a sour taste out of your mouth. But honestly, like every at bat I think I've seen, I know for the last two games, but definitely this game for sure, I think Aaliyah's had that mentality and it has not been productive for her. Um, she just comes in there with a big swing and a big bat not hitting great pitches, hitting pitches she probably should should watch or foul off. Uh, so she almost just needs a different approach here. Remember, Baylor has stranded eight runners in this ball game. Benford with the punch out down the line, but foul off the top of the wall. But well wide. There. And she has three fly ball outs, 0 for 3 today. Yeah, much better swing there for her. She takes that first pitch, jumps on it, knowing, hey, they're going to get ahead of the count here. I'm probably going to see a pretty good strike. And doesn't force it, takes that ball the opposite way. Benford, Watson, and Bauer, a combined 0 for 6 today. And this will be a fair ball and extra bases for Benford. She's being told to hold up at second. And it's a leadoff double for Leah Benford. The comeback has begun. And that's a great adjustment right there. And that's where you make adjustments pitch to pitch. She threw me a pitch. I hit it up in the air, hit it deep, but miss hit it. Um, she throws it again. She gets on top of it this time. Nice line drive and gets a double, double out of it. Just gets on top of that ball right there instead of trying to lift it. Baylor, Baylor's going to bring uh, Emery McDonough to the plate, the freshman to hit for Watson. McDonough from Bosqueville. And Benford already in scoring position. They won't gamble with her whatsoever. They'll need a few more teammates to follow her home throughout this inning.
back for the backstop foul. Not a bad foul ball right there. Another great foul ball. Jordan Dale, a blown save, but all of a sudden is in line for a victory. If she can avoid allowing seven Bears to score here. Benford advances to third, but the Ducks are happy to trade the base for an L. Another drop third strike scenario we've seen. You can see Caroline Rowett, another Waco product from Midway High School down the road. The freshman makes her first appearance today in place of Bauer. Just her third at bat on the season. If she can find an RBI here. One zero from Dale. Foul ball sent into the mesh backstop. That woke up some folks. Yeah, you kind of giggle. The two kids standing right behind there. They, they jumped. Had some elder statesmen right next to them who didn't flinch. <laughs> Runner on third, Aaliyah Benford, after she doubled to lead off the seventh. One batted later, one out later. Here's the pinch hitter, row it. So go foul, one and two the count. Third game in two days for Baylor. Fourth game over the past three days for Oregon, who began this Texas swing in San Marcos against Texas State with a comeback victory against the Bobcats. And turn right back around the next day and played yesterday's double header. Two and two. So credit to this Oregon group. Having that seventh inning in them, considering how much softball they have played over the past really two plus days. I'm about to get on the bus and head to the airport. Just to do it all the way to California again next weekend. Left side, Benford comes home and gets that left foot in there before the tag from Wong. So Baylor strikes for their fourth run of the day but surrenders their second out of the inning before Trocum can come up. Now nobody on and two outs. It's a hard ground ball. Hustles down the line. They're able to make the play at first. But just a heads up play to try and get home too. A lot closer than you think it would be. Well, the freshman gets an RBI out of it. Thanks to the hustle from Benford. Ducks need one more out, and it's not going to come at Ryan Trocum's expense. Midway grad followed by a midway grad. I'm sure I'll be swamped with answers, but what is Midway in, in the middle of? <laughs> it 
actually it's well it's it, is it named <laughs> after is, is it named after carol midway yeah the school sits between hewitt and woodway however when the district began it was between uh, the South Bosky area and the Woodway area. So it was midway between those two. We've been working on that question for years just to set you up to show off your knowledge there. <laughs> I don't know about that. All this other softball got on the way though. Now midway often finds its way to some state championships. Yeah, had a pretty good run last year. They made it to the semifinal round. And Midway softball, Midway High School, where both Ryan Trogum and Carolyn Rowett played, is coached by a former Baylor Bear, Jordan Veneta. This is Taylor Strain all the way out in Robinson, Texas. <laughs> the other side down. Other way. <laughs> Strain, a second-year freshman, but who can feature in the nine-hole or the two-hole in this lineup. Missed her high school senior year and really her true freshman year. It has some great speed. Just trying to extend this ball game. As Baylor's already found one run here in the bottom of the seventh, but Baylor's down to its final strike, perhaps. Jordan Dale, after a blown save, looking for the victory. Left side gets down, base hit for Taylor Strain. Again, these Baylor fans have no place they'd rather be. They've got time. What kind of two out rally can Baylor put together? Great hit there. Doesn't force that ball, takes it into the gap. Send another Baylor Bear to the plate. We've already seen Benford score this inning after her leadoff double. Trocum's on second, Strain on first. Here's Casey West. And top the order if West can keep the good times going. Third batter to come up for Baylor with two outs this inning. It should get out of play, it does. The O2. And we are still playing softball here in Waco. Baylor trailing by six after Oregon reclaimed a lead in the top of the seventh, scoring seven. And West very patiently making Jordan Dale work for the victory. Not giving up hope here. Not giving it, not giving in. Two on, two outs for Baylor. They just need base runners. And to avoid that third out, punched over the right side, fell. Again, a big thanks to our entire crew who's been busy this weekend and may still have some more work to be done with a baseball series continuing through tomorrow. Always great to see all their familiar faces. For some of them, just their voices, counting us in and out of breaks. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The nine hitter Casey West trying to keep this game alive.
Dale in the circle, third pitcher today for Oregon. Looking to slam the door shut here in Waco. Bases loaded for Baylor. And they still need more. And then because of the way you set up the lineup, you have a power hitter in your leadoff spot. Emily Hot coming in here with bases loaded. Coming in hot. <laughs> I'm sure she appreciates the joke, the pun. What joke? <laughs> A brief conference chat in the circle. Have to imagine uh, it was just a reassuring message of you've got a six run lead. Just find the out. Yep. Don't let any issues compound themselves. Well, again, just like she said in the fourth inning when we interviewed, probably trust the process, trust the plan. We've got, got the talent, we've got the skill, we can do this here. You've got the lead. There's no need to allow that pressure to influence you at all. Oregon brought 12 batters to the plate in the top half of this inning. This is the seventh batter to come up for Baylor here in the bottom half. Remember the fight that Baylor put up last night where Oregon was finally able to split the double header. Bases loaded. Emily, four home runs last year. And a great snag by Sid. Tags the bag, and that's your ball game and your series. Pac-12 and Big 12 collide over these past two days. And after dropping the first match,